experience. Well, no, I, I was just describing the what interoperability okay. is. Um, I actually think that practically it's something that will be very difficult to to put in place. Mm. Uh, there's there's two reasons. One is the um, the graphical fidelity between worlds will be different. So someone like the Sandbox, which is one of the metaverse world, um, is a voxel-based platform, which means that you know it's basing it's basically built with like cubes like Minecraft. Um, and then you have a platform like Decentraland, which is slightly more realistic. So even though you can bring a certain item from A to B, it will look pixelated or voxel driven in a, in a more photorealistic world. So right. there will be a problem in the way that things look, right? Even though you know the blockchain enables right. you to transfer assets from one place to another, it will look out of place. So how do you solve that? That's a big, that's a big problem. <laughs> Some really strong API. <laughs> yeah, right. There, there's companies trying to convert assets you know, from one to another, but that, that becomes complicated when, when you have a lot more platforms. So that's one problem. And then the other problem, I think, is the problem of incentives, where I just you know, learning from the lessons right. of Facebook and what happened and, you know, all the big platforms, when you become the dominant force, what's the, what's the incentive of opening your ecosystem to all of these smaller players? Of course, the small players want to be compatible with Fortnite. They would want to be compatible with Roblox. But from their, their perspective, why would they make those assets, you know, it's obvious that the other platforms are going to siphon some of the audience that they have and they have very little to gain. So I think as the big platforms become bigger and bigger, the incentives to be interoperable are going to be limited. And everyone will want to enforce their standards, not work on the basis of common standards. So there are a few like groups, you know, pushing for interoperability and you can see companies joining it, but nothing is really coming out of it yet. There's no standard for interoperability. I just don't see who has the real incentive to make that happen. Um, there is obviously this, you know, this this great vision to make that happen, but we know when when billions of dollars are in the balance, um, it's likely that this will take over the the grander vision. So I think, you know, practically speaking, full interoperability might be difficult. But the good news is that the blockchain, which is the second component, the, when I talked about the convergence of two forces to create the metaverse, is gaming technologies that are going to be used for use cases beyond games. And the other one is the blockchain. The blockchain creates this new business model, um, this new economy I'm sure we'll, we'll talk about that enables you know, ownership of digital items and basically um, to transfer assets you know, without, without borders. And if you layer these two things, this is what really creates this, this unique moment in time with the convergence of these two forces that will lead into the next phase of the internet. I love it. No, it makes a lot of sense. Uh, where do you stand when it comes to platform monopoly? So, like, what's what if we had to guess? You know, we push ourselves a few years in the future. Let's not think about the timing yet. But where do you think we'll land realistically? What's your guess? And then, uh, what can we do um, to sort of make like sway from one side to the other? I think metaverse, the metaverse platforms are going to follow a, a distribution that would be fairly similar to social media, mm. in my view. So you'll have, you know, your your Facebook and your Instagram and your TikTok, which are like the the big platforms that everyone pretty much uses, um, and those would be fairly agnostic, you know, platforms that um, don't necessarily have a specific use case, but would be very good at just attracting people. And then the network effects will form. And then if all your friends are into one, you're more likely to get there. The audience will attract brands, brands will bring a, a new revenue stream and so on. And it just kind of, you know, s snowballs from there. And then I think you'll have your second, uh, tier of, of platforms as well, which might be more context contextual. So you might have, you know, a sports metaverse, a music metaverse, um, which caters to that audience better um, and therefore attracts, you know, more like very close mm -hmm. need communities, but maybe less people overall. So I think, you know, there's still going to be a, a big dominance in only a few a handful of, of metaverse platforms, because at the end of the day, it's like it's, it's like, you know, it's like the Internet or social media platforms, like the value is driven by the people that are there and people are not going to be part of 30 different platforms. Um, so, so yeah, that's, that's the way that, that I see it. And this is why I think interoperability between the top platforms is going to be important. Interesting. Interesting. So are you fighting for a specific narrative 
Uh, are you trying to, you know, be one of those platforms that suggests how it looks like, how we should behave, etc.? Or are you fighting for the interoperability, interoperability aspect? Well, at Landvolt, I mean, we are, the good news is we are, we are not building the platform the, itself, right? We are basically a, a construction company that builds on top of those platforms. We haven't talked yet about why that is possible in, in Web3 and not really in, in the previous phase of the internet. It's basically due to the, the, the way that those platforms are, are decentralized and the different layers of creativity that they enable. But um, by, by being agnostic to the platform, you know, we, we can build anywhere. We are basically okay. builders of, of those worlds. So for us, you know, whether it's two platforms or 10,000 platforms, um, it just adds a bit of complexity, but the, the business is, is pretty much agnostic to that.